feeling overwhelmed by the amount of projects you have going on in your life and the endless to-do lists and tasks that go along with that, Stay tuned for this video where I'm going to show you step by step how to implement a project management system called Kanban so that you can see your personal life projects make some forward progress. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be sharing today's video with you. I'm going to be going over what is a Kanban board and how you can apply that to your personal life projects. Let's jump right into it. I recently hit a wall of frustration in my own life where I felt like I had too many pending projects and to-dos going on and I wasn't seeing the forward progress I wanted to see. Partially, there were tasks that I needed my husband's help with and I needed to coordinate with him and have a visual way so that he could see as well as I could see the tasks that were coming before us in taking care of our household. I had heard of Kanban before and had implemented it in the past in a small way, but this time I decided to jump fully into it with both feet. My husband works in the tech industry and they follow Scrum and Kanban a lot in their project management, so it made a lot of sense for me if I'm going to be working on a project management system that both of us are going to be involved in that I could do something that he was familiar with as well as myself. Kanban is a project management term that was made up in Japan, actually, in their manufacturing process. I'm not going to go into the history of that now, but just know that's where it comes from. For our purposes today, we are going to be building a Kanban board so that we can track our personal life projects. There are two important philosophies when using Kanban for project management. One is limited work in progress, and you'll see how that plays out when we create our Kanban board. The thought behind this is that for us to be efficient as humans, we can only focus on a small amount of things at a time. Really, we can focus on one thing at a time and get that done, but we may have multiple tasks we're juggling at a time, but we want to limit the ones that are a work in progress. Hence, we have limited work in progress. You'll find you'll probably only want about two or three items on the in progress, doing zone, which we'll get to. The other key to Kanban is this idea of pull versus push. So rather than have a whole to-do list in front of me where I sit down in the morning, I have my 30 tasks, and then I begin to feel overwhelmed, and I have like all these tasks pushed upon me, or if I have all these tasks for my husband to do, I'm like, here's your to-do list, like do all these things. That's what push looks like. For pull, as we break down what an actual Kanban board looks like, you'll see that we pull the tasks that are the highest priority or the easiest to do or what is the next logical step for the project. And we pull those things into our active in progress zone. I will give you a visual of what that looks like once we jump into our Kanban board. I'm gonna go ahead and show you my current Kanban board so you can have a great visual example of a way that you can set this up for yourself. I highly recommend that you use sticky notes for this. It's super convenient. If you buy the post-it brand and the super sticky ones, you won't have to worry about them falling off the wall. You can stick them and restick them and move them around as many times as you need to. I didn't have enough sticky notes, so I created my own with tape and paper. And that's a temporary until I get my Amazon order in and replace all of the current tasks. So there are four important sections for our Kanban board. As you can see on the left, we have what I call the projects. Now, one of them is just a category. As we go down the list, we have the life other category. My husband and I have specific projects that we're focusing on that we want to be actively moving forward. I also wanted a place where I could collect the pending tasks that were coming in that I was thinking of and being able to write them down and get them out of my head. So this combo board is a great place for that. So our first section is our list of projects. Those will go down the left hand side of the Kanban board. Then the next column that we have is our backlog. So the backlog is the place where you store all of your tasks. This is where you want to start out. You get your sticky notes and you start writing out as you look at your first project and write out the tasks that you can think of that are related to that project. 
Now, if you're just coming up with tasks to come up with tasks, I would probably avoid doing that. Instead, do the things that have been floating around that you've been needing to capture, as well as what you see as some of the most important next steps for pushing your project forward. Capture those tasks, put them in the backlog. The next column that we have is our in progress or our doing column. And this is where you take the tasks from the backlog and you look at all of them on a day and you're like, okay, I'm going to conquer these tasks. And you grab one or two items and put them into the in progress zone. Now you know what you need to focus on for the day. And when you get those tasks done, that leads us to our last column, which is done or completed. Now you take that sticky note and put it in the done column. And let me tell you how good it feels to take tasks from the backlog, move them through the process and get them completed. I think that's part of the power of the Kanban board is for me, I'm kinesthetic. So there's something about the tactileness of grabbing a physical sticky note and moving it through the process. When you create your Kanban board, it's helpful to have columns and rows. So with your projects going down the left hand side, your rows will go straight across and the tasks related to that project will remain in that lane. In the tech world, they call it a swim lane. Because that's kind of basically what it is. Your tasks are going to swim from your backlog all the way to your completed zone. Then you have your columns. The first column obviously is your project list. Your second, third, and fourth columns is your backlog, your in progress, and your completed columns. The Kanban project management method is pretty simple, but it's really powerful in helping you move your personal projects forward. Remember that complexity breeds confusion, so try to keep things as simple as possible. As you saw with our board, we started out with four columns, and so far, that's been all that we've needed. There are options as you get more versed in the Kanban system, but this video is meant to be an overview of the basics of how to get started, and that's what I've given you today. As you can see, I used a wood paneled wall because it had naturally built in columns. There are so many ways you can build a Kanban board for yourself. You could use a whiteboard, use markers to create your columns and rows. You could use some painter's tape or washi tape to make some nice columns and rows on a wall or a mirror or other flat surface. You really can take this and customize it to whatever resources you have available to you. I would love to hear your feedback and questions on this video. If you have any, please post them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to respond to as many of you as I possibly can as well. Have you heard of Kanban before? Have you tried to use it in your own life? And if so, how effective has it been for you? I really hope that you try out Kanban for yourself and I really hope that you let me know how it affected your personal project management. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like content like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos. I hope you have an awesome day.